Good morning, people Watch him at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve. It's a gift. Through faith, belief in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. People always, I find it interesting that people always want to add something to the gospel. No matter how simple it's presented to them, they want to add to the gospel. It is grace. Again, something we didn't earn and something we don't deserve that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, here's the key word, believe in him, will not perish but have eternal life. Once you come to the end of yourself and admit you're a sinner in need of a savior, you can't save yourself. You can't do anything to earn salvation. Nothing. Jesus already took care of it. That's why when you accept Christ as savior, when you admit you're a sinner and you accept Christ as savior, you've accepted the gift of grace that he has given Number one. Number two, you've automatically repented. Metanoia changed your mind because that's a big thing with a lot of people. They feel you have to turn from everything. Just stop doing everything. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in and changes you over time. You have no desire to do what you want, what you once did. But unfortunately, we live in a fleshly body. So now somebody's going to come along and do what they've always done. Oh, so you're telling me that I can get saved and go kill somebody. Well, first of all, you're not saved if you think that. Because you're not going to want to think that way. And you're not going to want to be that way. The Holy Spirit is, is a person. And the Holy Spirit is Christ who dwells in you, indwells in you. When you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. You are sealed until the day of redemption, which means you won't lose your salvation. Once again, somebody's going to come along and say, oh, so I can go out and do what I want to do then. Good. Yeah, you're not saved. Because what happens instantly when you accept Christ as Savior You repented. Hmm. What does that mean? That means you've changed your mind. Think about it. Think about it. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit will guide you, lead you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. And yes, you are sealed until the day of redemption. No man, nothing can pluck you out of the hands of the living God when you've accepted his gift of grace. That's the gospel. I got to give you this article. All hell's breaking loose right now. Or we're getting ready to. And who knows? You know, I was wrong about the Olympics because I was under the impression that the Olympics was going to happen in May or April. I didn't know the Olympics was only a couple of weeks away. So things might pick up either before, during, or after. I don't know. But um, right now, this nation is falling because of who's in office. Now, like I said yesterday, I believe I said yesterday or the day before, he's supposed to be in office. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's leading this nation to chaos. Do I believe that the United States and America is the great whore of Babylon? Probably. Yeah. He is in office doing what he's supposed to do. And that's caused chaos. If you remember, I said last year when Trump was in office, I said, and I, I remember I got so much flack from people, so much that I said, Lord, I don't know how to take this. I said that 
And this was while he was still in office. I said, he can't get reelected again because someone has to usher in the rapture and it won't be him. I had said that last year. I said that he, 45, cannot be reelected again because it's going to take a whole lot of chaos to come on the scene. It's going to take a world economic collapse, and he's not going to do that. As long as Trump was in office, there was none of this was going on. Matter of fact, to be perfectly honest with you, Putin was scared of Trump. Putin was scared of Trump. He respected him. And none of this was going on. None of this would have gone on. But you have to remember something. The way the Bible talks about the end times, especially in the Old Testament, there has to come somebody on the scene to usher in the Great Tribulation and the Antichrist. What better way to do it than this guy that's in there right now? There has to be chaos. And again, I said, like I said on Ty's, uh, Ty made a video this morning. Ty Green. If you haven't had a chance, go watch it. There has to be chaos in order for the Antichrist to come on the scene. Because people are going to look to somebody other than God to make it right. In what better way than now? This is a perfect opportunity to do this. Keep in mind, Russia don't have any money. Russia's poor. It's a very, very bad economy over there. But they got the equipment. And they darn sure has the technology. Where are they getting their equipment and where they're getting the money from? Hmm, it rhymes with China. Basically, it rhymes with China. The people who are in charge of the United States right now are weak. They want war. They want chaos. They want to weaken the American people, which is what they're doing right now with the you-know-what. Matter of fact, this whole thing started to remove 45 out of office. You know what? You know what I'm talking about. The you-know-what. That's how it started. There has to be chaos. So basically, Biden is following his father, which is Satan. That's what he's doing. And he's bringing this, uh, he's bringing this country to a head. Let me give you this article. This came off of Prophecy News Watch. And this goes hand in hand with what I was just saying. Market crash coming or can we wait a little longer? What would the country look like if an epic market crash suddenly wiped out $35 trillion in financial wealth? You may not want to think about something so horrible, but we are being warned that it will not only, it's not a matter of if, but when. The stock market has tanked for, I think, about seven days now in a row. I haven't looked at it today. Stock prices have been falling for three weeks in a row. There you go. Three weeks now. Last week was the worst week for U.S. stocks in a really, really, really long time. The S&P 500 is down more than 8% from the peak of the market. And the tech-heavy NASDAQ is already in correction territory, which it is. I read that last week. My son, Cody, just turned 18. He just turned 18, and he has stock in Bitcoin. And he, has his, he puts uh, money in, his, uh, in some of this stuff. So he watches it very closely. He knows what he's doing. Because he just, he did something. I don't know what he's, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's been watching this for a while. He's, he's smart as a whip. So he knows what he's doing. He watches the S&P every day. 18 years old. At this point, the NASDAQ is off 
to his worst beginning to a year in decades, and many are extremely concerned about what's coming next. In fact, Bank of America, Bank of America is warning that all hell breaks loose if the NASDAQ closes below 14,000. When this invasion starts, I do believe this will happen. Because like I said, when this invasion starts with Russia and Ukraine, China will invade Taiwan. Now, maybe they are waiting for the Olympics. And like I said, I had it wrong. That goes to show you how important I think the Olympics are. I'm not watching it. But I thought it was uh, in a couple of months. It's actually in a couple of weeks. Last week, one of the most respected names in, fi in the financial world made headlines all over the globe when he warned that the stock market crash, which has now begun, will end the super bubble that Wall Street has been enjoying for so many years. Now, you know who else prophesied this is Barry Scarborough. He's been saying this for years, that this was going to happen. We're in the midst of it right now. We're in the beginning of it. Jonathan Grantham, the famed investor who for decades has been calling market bubbles, said the historic collapse in stocks he predicted a year ago is underway and even an in, in, intervention by the Federal Reserve can't prevent an eventual plunge of almost 50%. You think the gas prices are high now? You think the store shelves are empty now? In the note posted Thursday, Grantham, the co-founder of Boston's asset manager GMO, describes U.S. stocks as being a super bubble. Only the fourth of the past century. And just as they did in the crash of 1929, the dot-com bust of 2000 and the financial crisis of 2008. You all remember what happened in 2008? Obozo was elected. The stocks crashed. He's certain this bubble will burst, sending indexes back to statistical norms and possibly further. Now, before I get off, before I get further into this, there was, um, and I think I mentioned it. No, I didn't mention this last night. The U.S. is also worried about a cyber attack from Russia right now. I got to find the article on that, but they are concerned about that going on. I could see that happening. I could definitely see that happening. But back to this, according to Grantham, excuse me, that would, if a cyber attack happened, that would, that would burst this thing. Just dawned on me. According to Grantham, there have been five other super bubbles. And they all ended badly. He noted that U.S. stocks have experienced two such super bubbles. Before 1929, a market fell that led to the Great Depression. Again in 2000 when the dot-com bu uh, bubble burst. And he also said the U.S. housing market was a super bubble in 2006. And in eight, 1989, Japanese stocks and housing markets both were super bubbles. All five of these super bubbles corrected all the way back to trend with much greater and longer pain than, than average. We should give some credit to the geniuses at the Fed for keeping the party going as long as they have. But by inflating this bubble to such an absurd size, they have set the stage for a meltdown that will be unparalleled in our entire history. This is bad. This is leading to something so bad. And like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. As I have warned so many times over the past, stock valuation ratios always return to their long-term averages eventually. 
If they were to fall just two-thirds of the way to historical norms, Grantham says that wealth losses in the U.S. could total $35 trillion. For the first time in the U.S., we have simultaneous bubbles across all major asset classes, said Grantham, co-founder of investment firm GMO, in a paper Thursday. He estimated wealth losses could total $35 million, trillion in the U.S. should uh, valuations across major asset classes return two-thirds of the way to historical norms. If this actually happens, it will result in an economic horror show that will be unlike anything we have ever seen before in all of U.S. history. This will make the 1929 depression looked like a picnic. And it was all set up by the Federal Reserve and our extremely irresponsible and doofus and demented politicians in Washington. But hopefully stock prices will bounce back up a, a bit this week. And we'll have some more time to, before the really big crash arrives. Like I said, it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. <clears throat> because you can't keep printing money, printing money, and printing money. Something is going to happen. And that's what they're doing right now. It says here, because once it gets here, Nothing will be the same. Like I said, we're in the midst of this right now. People are writing to me every day, telling me that the store shelves are empty everywhere. And I got firsthand of it. I don't shop at Walmart. I only get my laundry detergent and stuff like that there because it's cheaper there. But I happen to walk around and look at the stores and look at their shelves. And sure enough, they're getting hit hard. They're getting hit hard. I saw it for myself, and it's not good. When the S&P 500 falls below its 200-day moving average last week, it freaked a lot of people out. Too many, To many investors, this was a clear sign that it was time to leave the party. Tech stocks were the poster children for the seemingly endless stock market rally and now they're starting to lead the way down in fact the tech savvy uh heavy nasdaq fell more than one percent during every single trading session last week the last time that happened was during the implosion of the dot-com bubble to wit, the NASDAQ 100 just did something it hasn't done since the aftermath of the internet bubble. Fall more than 1% in every session. It doesn't count as a uh, superlative because Monday was a holiday. And this was last week. But for investors caught up in the sell-off, it was like something shifted. You know how you can feel something in the air, something has shifted, which is what I've been feeling lately. A full week of big, uh, big down days hasn't happened since the dot-com burble bus. First in April of 2000, then in September of 2001. Back then the NASDAQ went off to fall another 28% before the market bottomed roughly a year later. Thanks to disappointing subscriber numbers, Netflix was a tech stock that was really hit hard. Netflix shares uh, fell 21.8% last Friday after the company quietly admitted in its fourth quarter earnings that streaming competition is eating into its growth. Good. It also marks Netflix's worst day since July 25, 2012 when shares fell 25%. It's also his worst week since July 27, 2012, when the stocks fell about another 28%. And Amazon was another tech stock that really got hammered. 
Shares of Amazon uh, fell 12%. This was last week. It marks Amazon's worst week performance in four years. And if you can believe Jeff Bezos actually saw the size of his fortune of his fortune shrink by twenty billion dollars last week, could you imagine losing that much money in a week? Bitcoin investors are feeling a lot of pain right now. At this point, the bottom of Bitcoin is down more than fifty percent from the record high in November. Bitcoin extended its decline on Saturday and has shed more than 50% of its record high in November while adding further momentum to the uh, meltdown in cryptocurrencies. But this isn't the end of the party on Wall Street. This is the beginning of the end. Unless there's some uh, sort of unexpected trigger event, I think this, I think that it is really likely that we will get some sort of bounce. Now, this was, again, this was last week. Because I saw he mentioned the holiday. This was last week. But, of course, nobody should take a bounce as a sign that the pain is over. Ultimately, Grantham is quite correct that our super bubble is going to spectacularly burst. The only question is when. Once the inevitable explosion takes place, things will start to change in this country at a pace that is absolutely breathtaking. And nothing will be able, will ever be the same again. I'm going to link this article in the description box, folks. Like I said, it's time to wake up and get saved because that verse in Revelation, we are in the throes of what's going to happen in the future. If we're seeing, if we're in this right now and we think this is bad now with these wars that are coming on, It's going to be far worse in the tribulation. And that is coming. The stage is set for the great tribulation. The spirit of the Antichrist is already on the horizon. It's just a matter of when for the great tribulation. And keep in mind, if we're this close to the great tribulation, how much closer are we to the rapture of the church? But only, hmm, I got something to say about that. Only those who have accepted the gift of grace from Jesus Christ. No man comes to the Father except through the Son. And only those who have accepted his blood-bought gift of grace. Only those of us who believe will be raptured. If you don't believe in the blood that he shed on the cross was buried and rose again on the third day for your sins, you're going to be left here. That's the bottom line. That's the truth. I'm not going to put sugar on crap and call it candy. That is the truth. Either you accept Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, which is believing, or you don't. Or you want to add to it yourself. And say, oh, I got to keep doing this. I got to do this. I got to keep doing this in order to maintain my salvation. Get out of that Pentecostal movement mindset. Get out of that lordship salvation mindset. Get out of that cult. And start believing in Christ for real. And look up scripture. And start believing in Christ for real. And what he did for you at the cross. And rest in him. Because you did not earn your salvation. You come to him strictly by believing. And if you want to argue with that or argue with the fact that is right there in the Bible, argue with God. But let me explain something why you want to argue with God. You won't win. Period. He made you before you were even a thought. And your arms are way too short to box with him. So just accept Christ as Savior. 
and rest that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to link this article in the description box. I will be back with the next video. Thank you.